And there we go. Okay, so the question was about distinguishing between oocytes and follicles and just uh, how those two things relate to understanding of the ovarian cycle. So I figured the best place to talk about this would be on the ovary itself, since this is the location where all those things are and where the ovarian cycle takes place. And <clears throat> so let's do some, before we zoom in, just do some definitional stuff. And I think I'll just do it in purple over here to the side of the screen before we get started. Alrighty, so an oocyte is a gamete, meaning it's a sex cell and it's gonna combine with another sex cell to form a new individual. So it is one cell and only one cell. And it is specifically a haploid cell, meaning it has half the amount of DNA as a somatic cell. Now, oocytes are part of follicles, but they are not the same thing as follicles. And this is a mistake that a lot of students make. Um, I see this error being made on the lab practical fairly often. Um, so it's really important that everybody understands that an oocyte is just one cell and they're in follicles, but they are not synonymous with follicles. So an ovarian follicle, and I'm specifying ovarian here because there are other follicles in other organs elsewhere in the body. So when we say follicle, we have to specify where it is. So an ovarian follicle is a group of cells. So it's the oocyte plus other cells in a little ball that includes one oocyte and only ever one oocyte and then many granulosa and fecal cells. So as ovarian cycle progresses, so from day zero to day 28, follicle cell number and size increase. But again, not because the oocyte is multiplying and not because the oocyte is physically growing larger, although it does a little bit, but rather it's the granulosa cells and the fecal cells that are increasing in number. So let's go have a look at those things on our ovary here. So I'm gonna circle a bunch of follicles that I can see even at this low magnification, and then we'll zoom in on some of them. But I like to model for you how you can even tell what's going on if you're not you know, zoomed way far in because starting zoomed out is really important so that you have enough context to understand what you're looking at when you do zoom in. So here's a follicle, there's a follicle, there's one, that's a really big one. Here's one, here's one, here's one. And obviously, since I'm able to circle and observe follicles at a very low magnification, because this is a whole ovary here, they have to be bigger than one cell because I wouldn't be able to do that if they were only one cell. And there are many more follicles present than I have circled here. It's just, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and circle every single one that I can see because that's a waste of our time. So here are some follicles. I am going to start at a place where they are at their earliest phase of development. And that's typically at the edge of the ovary. Oh, zoomed a little bit too far in. Okay. So here we have the edge of the ovary and the edge area of the ovary where all of these little follicles are clustered is, has a specific name and it's pretty cute. It's not on your list though. So don't 
expect me to test you on this. I'm just giving you it for contextualizing information. So the edge area of the, of the ovary where you tend to find lots and lots of primordial follicles clustered together is called the egg nest, which is pretty cute. And the egg nest is area of ovary where lots of primordial follicles are found. And so as you can see, there's a bunch of them here. And so now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further on one of them and I'll point out its features and then we'll uh, go and look at uh, basically how the follicle changes as it develops and increases in cell numbers. So you'll have little examples of each thing along the way. Okay, so where's one that I like? I'm trying to pick one that's exemplary so it's fairly representative. I like this one. Okay. So this is a primordial follicle. And it is still a follicle because it's more than one cell. So this big cell in the center, and I'll circle it with another color so it's clear is, the oocyte. And then you can see it's got a thin layer of other cells around it. Let's make those green. So you can see there's the nucleus of one here. Here's one here. Here's one here. So surrounding this cell, but kind of in a flattened and squamous state, are just a little buffer zone of other cells. And these are the cells that are going to eventually perk up and become granulosa cells. So as you can see, follicle is more than one cell. It's a collection of cells. And then as we move forward with development during the ovarian cycle, the number of those cells is gonna increase. So this is primordial. And so when a infant is born that has ovaries, all of that infant's ovaries are in this particular state at the time of birth and they stay this way from birth until puberty. So if you were to look at a childhood ovary, it would just be all primordial follicles and really nothing else going on because there's no follicular development prior to that. Although interesting fact, there is a thing called precocious puberty where uh, for any number of reasons, the hypothalamus begins to secrete GnRH and turn on puberty earlier than it should. Um, and that has resulted in the youngest person ever to give birth was five years old, and it was due to precocious puberty, uh, among other things, because obviously someone had to, you know, participate in making that person, but that's the youngest birth on record, um, and that was due to precocious puberty. So uh, that is crazy and also problematic for obvious reasons. But precocious puberty is extremely rare, uh, very uncommon. So just sort of a medical anomaly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is find an early stage primary follicle. I think I see a good one. Ah, okay. Yes, this is a really good one. Sorry, histology guide's being a little squirrely at the moment, so trying to navigate slowly. Okay, so you'll notice if you look closely that the egg nest area is right nearby, so it's like down here. You can see primordial follicles. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that the cells that are kind of in between follicles, these guys are called stromal cells. making up the portion of the organ called the stroma. These are just kind of interstitial cells. So they're making up the physical bulk of the organ, um, not with functions that relate directly to the follicles necessarily. 
Okay, so let's, here we have our oocyte. And you'll notice that you can kind of faintly make out the nucleus here, but it's not very obvious. That's just because this slice happened to slice the cell adjacent to the nucleus. So it doesn't mean it doesn't have one, it just means that we can't see it. And then now you'll notice that the granulosa cells surrounding have increased in number. So there's more of them and they've gone from being squamous to cuboidal. So let me make my text a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. Single layer of cuboidal granulosa cells and still only one oocyte because there will only ever be one per follicle. So this is a primary follicle. So it's begun responding to the follicle stimulating hormone and it's working on getting bigger and increasing in size. And right next door to this one is another primary follicle, but it looks a little bit different. So you might be wondering, those two things look crazy different from each other. One of them is real big. How are they both a primary follicle? Great question. So again, you can still see where the oocyte is in this follicle. You just can't see the nucleus of it because the slice missed it. So don't rely on seeing a nucleus all of the time um, because the cell is a sphere, right? So if you happen to cut it the wrong way, you might not get the nucleus. Now we've got a thicker layer of cuboidal granulosa cells. And you can see that it's gone from simple cuboidal to stratified where there's more than one layer of cuboidal cells in one place. And then let me just make the outline of our oocyte, even though it's not really visible, so we can just kind of have a placeholder. So this is where our oocyte would be. And then you see this sort of wispy pinkish layer. That's the zone of pellucida beginning to form. And the zone of pellucida is a thick layer of glycoproteins and proteoglycans that surrounds the surface of the egg. And it's gonna be a barrier to fertilization when that time comes, if it does for this follicle. So here we have a later stage primary follicle. It's still not secondary though, because it doesn't have an antrum, uh, which would be a fluid filled space. And we don't see a fluid filled space here. So these are both primary follicles. So I'm gonna just label them. This is an earlier stage primary follicle. And this one is a later stage primary follicle. So on your list, if you look at your lab list, you'll notice it doesn't say early versus late for primary follicle. You don't need to tell me that. I'm just showing you and telling you so that you are prepared to see either kind and still mark it as being a primary follicle. It's nice that they had the decency to be right next to each other so we could compare and contrast them, isn't it? Okay, so now if we look around, we can see more primary follicles and they're kind of all over the place. So like, here's one, there's one, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go hunting for a secondary follicle now. There's a good one. And then here, you can, this is a nice primary. Again, you don't see an antrum. Okay, so this is a secondary follicle. Now again, can't see the nucleus of the oocyte, but no big deal. I'll circle it though. It is here. There's the oocyte. And then there's now this, which is a fluid filled space called an antrum. That's spelled A-N-T-R-U-M. And so this antrum, this fluid filled space will get bigger and bigger and bigger as the follicle develops until it ends up looking like Here's the antrum for this guy. So you can see it goes from being really small to really big. 
Now, now that we have an antrum, so basically if it has a if it has an antrum, but the antrum is not huge, then it's a secondary follicle. So you can see we do have an antrum here, which makes it secondary, but it's not super duper big enough to be tertiary, so secondary follicle. We can also see that the layer of granulosa cells has become quite thick. So now it's very stratified cuboidal. And if you look closely, you can see there's this kind of line here where the granulosa cells end, and then you get these sort of streaky looking cells on the edge, I'll bracket them in a different color. Those are called the thecal cells, T-H-E-C-A-L. So if you look at the hormone chart of the ovarian cycle in your textbook, you'll notice that as the ovarian cycle advances in time, the amount of estrogen circulating increases. And that is because the follicles, as they develop, produce estrogen. So what happens is the fecal cells make androstenedione dione and they pass it to the granulosa cells that convert that androstenedione dione into estrogen or estradiol mostly. So you need both kinds of cells to get the making of estrogen done. But if we know that you know, one granulosa cell is gonna produce X amount of estrogen, that means that the more granulosa cells we have active, the more estrogen there will be. And if there's multiple follicles developing simultaneously, that means that as those follicles continue to increase in size and release estrogen into the bloodstream, the amount of circulating estrogen is gonna increase and increase and increase over the course of the ovarian cycle. So let's go find some other secondary follicles just so we have some comparing and contrasting capabilities. Here's a nice one. So in this case, the, the slice happened to catch the follicle such that you can see two sides of the antrum. And then there's that oocyte in the middle. And let's also zoom in to see the corona radiata. Okay. So this pink layer, zona, Lucida, and then the structure formed by the group of granulosa cells that are kind of ringing the oocyte directly. So they're on the same side of the antrum as the oocyte. That structure is called the corona radiata. So this is another thing students confuse about when they're like, oh, well, I thought it was granulosa cells. It is, it's a shape made out of granulosa cells. So the structure is the corona radiata and it's made of granulosa cells. And then the granulosa cells that make up the edge, these guys, still granulosa cells, but the shape they're taking, so the fact that they're on the edge of the follicle and they're sort of forming the wall of it, these are the granulosa cells of the zona granulosa, sometimes also called the membrana granulosa. Um, either one is fine, but zona is easier to spell, so I recommend that one. So again, both the corona radiata and the zona granulosa are made out of granulosa cells. So they're made out of the same cell type as each other. It's just talking about where they are in the follicle and what shape they're taking in the follicle. So if I circle the corona radiata and I ask you to identify the structure, you're going to want to say corona radiata because I didn't ask you for the cell type. Okay, so here's a slightly more advanced secondary follicle. 
where the corona radiata is here. You can see that nice, and it has a very thick zona pellucida as well. And then once the antrum is super duper large and the oocyte and the corona radiata are sort of, oh no, a mass stuck to the side, then we call those tertiary or mature follicles. So this is the best one on the slide. Now, you might be wondering, where is the oocyte? Why isn't it in there? It's in there. It's just off screen somewhere. So the knife didn't pass through it when this slice was made. So maybe it's over here and maybe there's the corona radiata. We don't know. We don't know where it is. We can't see it. It doesn't matter though. And this one is tertiary follicle. Let me write, let me write all its stupid names down here. So this is one of the things in anatomy where uh, something has a bunch of different names and that tends to be confusing for students. So oops, tried to spell two words at the same time. Tertiary follicle. Graphian follicle. Or mature follicle are all acceptable answers. They mean the same thing. And this one is actually about to be ovulated. I can tell because there's this little curvature on the edge of the ovary here called the stigma, which means that this, this uh, follicle is probably going to be the one that wins and busts out of the side of the ovary. So one final note on the ovarian cycle is that with every 28 day cycle, it's more than just one primordial follicle that begins development. So as you can see from this ovary, we've got multiple follicles at the same time in different stages of development. And that's normal. So whichever one develops the fastest, so probably this guy, is going to win the race and ovulate. The rest of them, typically at some point become a tretic, which means they spontaneously arrest development and then begin the process of going away. So the granulosa cells undergo apoptosis or convert to something else and they just disappear. Um, every now and then there's an error or an accident in atresia and sometimes one ovary will, ov will ovulate two eggs at the same month. Not common, but it does happen. And also typically the ovaries kind of take turns and sometimes they both go in the same month. So there will be cycles throughout a person's lifetime where there are two eggs ovulated in the same month. And if fertilization of both of those happens during that month, that's how we get fraternal twins. And that concludes our little tour of follicles and what they mean.